Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at how you can use GIMP to generate a HTML image map. So you can use this particularly if you're a YouTube partner. You can use it to make a banner like the one I've got at the top of my channel. Uh, and then you can have in that image uh, clickable links that people can follow. So if you look at the banner I have on my channel at the moment, um, you'll see that um, each of these different elements is actually a link that takes you to various places and I won't tell you where they all go, I'll just let you explore that for yourself um, but you can also use this if you're not a YouTube partner you can use it for uh, MySpace band layouts and I think for the, the normal MySpace layout as well but it's been a while since I've been on MySpace so I'm not sure or any um, HTML page that you generate yourself you can include image maps in so they're quite versatile and particularly if you're going to do any web development and this is a really quick and easy thing you can do with a GIMP so I'll just show you how I made the banner I used on my channel. Um, basically you take the image that you want and obviously it took a little while for me to make this image um, so I'm not going to go through all the steps there, I'm just going to show you how to make the links work. Um, so once you've got your image and the various portions that you want to turn into links um, you go to your filters and go down to web and then pick this option here, image map and then you'll see uh, this dialog box comes up now this dialog box uh, looks a little bit technical but it's really straightforward to use. Basically what we're going to do is draw regions on the image and then enter in a link that we want that to go to. So it's really straightforward. So if I just um, go over to these three main ones over here, um, basically I'll just um, create a link to this one at the bottom, Mersby, and then um, you can see how that works. So basically when I want to make a link um, out of this part of the image. We just choose one of our selection tools along the side here. So in this case, because it's a simple block, I'm just going to pick a rectangle. So we just click on the rectangle there. And then you click once to define the first corner, and then you can drag it to wherever you want. And then when we click again, very simply, the uh, this new dialog box comes up where we get to put in our um, web address. So here I just type in the web address that I want people to visit, which in this case is mercy.com. And what I'm also going to do, and um, because I want people to stay on my uh, YouTube channel as well, uh, I'm going to make it open up in a blank new window or a new tab if you've got tabbed browsing. So we have underscore and then blank, and what that will do is just make sure it opens up in a new window so they don't navigate away from our page. So then we just click OK, and you can see that what it does over here is create that link. Um, and attach it to this box. Now at the moment that still isn't a clickable link um, because we're just in our image editor but I'll show you how it all works together later. And the reason I bring Mersby up is because Mersby is a great uh, VCE resource so if you're a, a student in Australia or Victoria particularly then uh, Mersby is a really good resource and I just like to give it a bit of a plug on here. Um, but also on Mersby if you do find some of this um, HTML stuff that I start to talk about towards the end of the video if you find that a bit confusing, I've actually got a bit of a tutorial on HTML um, that's hosted on Mersby as well, and I'll provide a link to that in the information. So once you've um, got one of your links here, and um, you can also create links around um, slightly more awkward shapes. So on my banner, um, you may have noticed that this word GIMP is also um, a clickable link. So what I did to make that is instead of having the rectangle tool, I use this polygon tool. So we just click on there and then very simply we just draw around it. And every click that we do just gives us a very rough outline. Now it doesn't have to be great because we're only making a link. It's not like using the intelligent scissors. Um, but I do want to miss some of these. So I just draw around there. And then when you're finished and you've drawn all the way around you just hold down the Alt key and then just click one more time and the area settings comes back up. So again you just put your um, web address in there, so in this case gimp.org and then if I don't if I don't mind people leaving my page then I can just leave this target frame blank and then it won't open up in a new page, it will just open up in the page that's showing. So just for the sake of showing how that works I'll do that here as well. Now for my one I've actually made links out of nine of the elements on the page so I'll let you discover for yourself where those are but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just show you what to do with these two. So once you've got all of your image map sorted you then need to save the map that you're working on. 
So you do that very simply by clicking on the floppy disk and then you need to save it um, with a name that's memorable. So uh, I don't want to save over my old one so I'm just going to call this tutorial.map and you just save it as .map and then obviously save it somewhere you'll be able to find it as well so the desktop will do for this and we click save and then that's all we need to do with this for the moment what you then need to do is save your regular image as you normally would and save that somewhere sensible as well and then what we're going to look at next is the actual banner itself uh, the um, the map code that we've just generated so when you open up your map code and this is the map code I made earlier um, you can see that you get this um, HTML code that's generated now I won't talk through all of this but basically this part at the top here is your very basic image tag in HTML it tells us the source of the picture file the width, the height, the border but most importantly it tells us this piece of information here uh, it uses the use map attribute and then gives it the value um, hash map and then we've got the um, map information down here and this is all generated automatically by um, GIMP now if you were going to generate this code yourself manually you'd have to figure out all of the coordinates you'd have to type all of this in GIMP does this in a matter of seconds so it's very easy to use it this way so uh, here we've got some um, some comment code which um, the creator of the GIMP plugin has asked us not to delete um, and it just gives you some kind of background information that doesn't do anything at all though and then everything after that is um, stuff to do with the links and um, actually how your image becomes clickable so if you were going to upload this to YouTube um, and if, particularly if you're a YouTube partner then the only thing you need to worry about is this section here from map name down to map because it asks you to put your image code in on the or the image map code in on the uh, on the partner page on the banner um, profiling page uh, and that's the only information it's asking for now on different websites that would be different so with MySpace they may ask for the information to be laid out in a different way um, but basically this is the image map code this is the HTML tag that you need and then this would be the, the map code itself so that's all fairly straightforward and then if you go to the um, the HTML tutorial that um, I'll post a link to um, then you'll be able to see how to you know make a web page completely from scratch and hopefully you can figure out how to use these uh, image maps in there and there's also another tutorial that explains how to make a custom MySpace layout I can't remember the name of the user off the top of my head but it was him that gave me the idea of making a GIMP version of this so I'll, um, I'll put a link to that video as well and you can follow his tutorial to see how to apply this completely to a, a MySpace layout. Anyway I hope you found this uh, informative and thanks for watching I'll see you next time.